You're listening to Raw, the podcast, the cyber resilience podcast for all existing and aspiring cyber professionals, putting the spotlight on the vital role that people and culture play in making organizations cyber safe. Resilient and cyber safe people are an organization's strongest defense against online abuse. I am your host, Marilise de Villiers-Basson, and the founder of Roar Coaching and Consulting. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode. I am so delighted to welcome Lee and James uh, as my guests today. Hello, Lee. Hello, James. Good Hello, afternoon. Lee. <laughs> so, uh, Lee Thomas and James Smith, uh, both from Alliance Media Group, and I have invited them because they do amazing work in the in the event space, and particularly where we are helping um, CISOs, uh, creating a safe space, I should say, for CISOs to have really, really meaningful conversations. Um, so a quick little intro to both of them. Lee is the founder of Alliance Media Group, um, a seeker of the ideal and passionate about achieving it. Um, his ambition and drive lie in creating valuable, candid networking platforms for senior executives across multiple industries. Um, Lee is from a customer service background, working in the entertainment and leisure industry, which has followed him through his career of working in B2B across enterprise IT, information and cybersecurity, oil and energy and mining industries as well. Lee is directly responsible for the CIO and CISO alliances in Johannesburg, Cape Town and Nairobi. Welcome, Lee. <laughs> Thank you. We're, we're, Grand we're, introduction. <laughs> where, where are you? Where are you currently based today? Uh, so I'm in South Wales. Still in still in South Wales at the moment in uh, the torrential weather. But uh, but yeah, remotely and frequenting those territories as much as often as much as I possibly can, which is uh, which is great. <laughs> Fantastic. So James uh, is the director of the CISO Alliances within the UK and Ireland. Um, the CISO Alliances is a community of CISOs, C-level executives and IT decision makers that are brought together to discuss the relevant issues within the sector to further education between peers. This platform allows the community to share candidly their experiences and views for the purpose of moving forward the sector with tangible takeaways and next steps. James utilizes his experience within customer care to build his community with a personal touch, which leads to building relationships with his community that is not often found within the industry. And I can testify to that. I've witnessed it firsthand <laughs> <laughs> as uh, someone who's recently joined the community and absolutely, you know, wonderful, wonderful conversations. So, um, Guys, tell me about you. I really want to find out a little bit more about, and Lee, I'm going to start with you. Why? Why did you create the Alliances Media Group? Yeah, no, for sure. I, I think um, there, there was a few gremlins on each shoulder to, to justify why I launched it, right? I think um, the event space for all all its hard work um, from, from all the entities that contribute to it, and, you know, it's not an easy industry to be part of it is essentially herding cats and achieving commercials from all sorts of different angles to make things make sure things happen the right way but um what i did see within the industry and you touched upon in the intro introduction there i'm from um more of a sort of customer experience customer service industry in hospitality where um the customer's always right right and um and making sure that we're servicing that within the event space specifically i i sort of found in my experience, um, and this opinion, this is opinion led, right? So I don't want to sort of uh, knock anyone's hard work. Um, but um, I found that the industry very much focuses on the commercial gain of, of the events that take place. Um, and my understanding from my sort of 11 years of working within the industry now, up to 11 years working in the industry, is that people are within these environments to learn from each other, right? And, and gain that benchmarking. Um, opportunity and unfortunately when commercials and sponsorship and marketing are controlling an element of this environment um sometimes loses touch with that opp opportunity for educational gain so um i wanted to try and try and to create a honest environment um 
which was transparent in its build um, and, it, and, and its ethos and its morals um, in that we wanted to create this alliance which stands for a union formed for mutual benefit. It's cheesy, don't get me wrong, but that's the college definition of it. And that's why the company's called the uh, Alliance Media Group and the CISO alliances and CIO alliances off the back of that. Um, it is to make sure that everyone who's part of what we're doing is winning in the environment, right? Um, we naturally, as an organization, achieve commercials. Um, more than that, I get a lot of fulfillment from doing it for myself and doing it for community members that are part of what we, we we've impacted over the last six years. Um, but um, but but yeah, not not necessarily just making it all about this selling environment, this corporate flag waving environment, this chess beating environment, if you like, and and kind of stripping it back about the educational side of things. Not necessarily not, not necessarily academic. But you know, being able to candidly grow out your network and gather more perspectives from within um, like-minded peers from within your territory that you work in um, was was the key key part of it. You know, and um, the message hasn't changed over the last six years. It's uh, it's great. Even yesterday, I introduced it to a, a new executive. It was introduced to me by one of the communities and uh, by one of the community members in Cape Town and. You know, straight away, the guy's like, yeah, I've been looking for something like this. And it's still six years in. I'm still looking and finding new people, you know. Amazing. No, that's fantastic. So, so um, Lee, I know that you, you lead up the South Africa um, uh, chapters. And then, um, James, you're responsible for UK and Ireland. Um, wh when yeah. did you join, James? I joined in 2017, I okay. think it was. was okay. I, think, I think that's correctly. Um, Feels like a, lo a lifetime ago, Marilee, so I won't, I won't lie about that bit. But um, yeah, 2017. So I, I I knew Lee long beforehand, um, sort of family friend and, and through fam different family members. And um, we, funny enough, we were out for my cousin stag do and Lee was getting ready to go to South Africa for one of his chapters that he was running a few days later. And I think we spent the whole evening just talking about that and how I could get involved and my background of working within customer care and customer se um, service within, um, uh, you know, I was doing insurance, I was doing fintech companies, even photography. And, and I'd been to all these different trade shows and conferences within those different industries as probably what people would probably call the annoying salesperson that's at the booth trying to get you into to listen to what we've got to say and we've got a speech to go off and and they're just there they they don't really have a clue what what we're really talking about to be honest with you even though they're in that industry and i had just come back from from uh infosec europe actually funny enough i, I didn't want to really you know put names out there but you know everyone knows it's a massive massive conference um and we weren't right to be there and it just ended up becoming um basically a uh a collection of names that's all we were doing was collecting business cards i came away with losing my voice that's the only thing that i got from it um so i just got frustrated and that, that's and i think that's sort of a core element of what the CISO alliance is you know the you know the guys and um that we that we work with whether it's from our community or especially from our vendors as well um but also with us directors is just pure frustration mm. of how the events were still are and probably still will be in five six years time but it's trying to make a dent in that and trying to make a difference um and, and that's what sort of drew me to the alliances is actually having that ability to if we can influence one person where they come away from our chapters and they gain knowledge we've done our job you know and that's that's how i see it and i love that because i um my passion is all about um courageous conversation and roar is all based on um facing facing difficult conversations in particular yeah. head on and i think for me um when when you see um the industry and you see big events like that and you just reflect on how how many meaningful conversations are people actually having you know how much are we actually um caring about the individual caring about their problem, their challenge, their opportunity, and and how are we actually um, 
changing that dialogue so that it becomes more about exactly what you guys said. It's about customer care. It is about, you know, the right solution. So very much about the right solution at the right time. Um, and also, um, you know, a very, very important sort of community aspect. So I love I love the community aspect of, of CISO alliances in particular, you know, so um, Lee, you mentioned earlier that alliances mean it's a, uni a union formed for mutual benefit, right? Correct. So this is this is amazing because it's all about um, creating win-win outcomes for individuals. So bringing individuals together and creating win-win outcomes. I mean, if, if I just for a moment reflect on my raw process, it's recognize, observe, assert, and redirect. And when you have a difficult conversation with someone, you've got to recognize what's going on. You've got to observe, you've got to stay present. You've got to then interact with that person in a meaningful way. So assert, ask a question, but redirecting is all about how do you change that conversation conversation so that you focus on mutually beneficial outcomes. You're helping people to create that win-win outcome. And, and that's why I love, love this whole um, alliance um, positioning. And obviously, um, you continue to say that if fulfillment can be achieved with a community build, build it as a union formed for mutual benefit. And I absolutely, absolutely love that. Um, so it is a safe space. We've established now that CISO Alliances is a safe space for CISOs to freely express their views and share their experiences. And, and so I think you've kind of alluded to why this is so important to you. Um, but Lee, just, just say a little bit more on that. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> I'm, I'm sort of fortunate in um, in terms of the experience that I, I had, and I am very grateful to my previous employer. Um, I wouldn't want to mention them, not to be uh, misquoted or, or, or to have any negative on them, but the experience I had firsthand of being part of this um, rather large organization, right? They were part of um, 500 Inc. for two or three years whilst I was there, and um, which is the largest um, start in, startup companies in America. Um, huge company um, brand wise working with some of the most fantastic organizations um, and the people within those organizations are even better right and i was responsible for building our communities within mining oil and gas industry as well as cio and CISO um, eventually in the latter years that i was there and the one thing that used to really frustrate me was this hype curve um within within the industry right um <clears throat> they'd be I don't ever speak to people when I needed them to attend something, which really bothers me. And is another reason why I, I, I started this in the first place is to not treat people like a commodity, right? But, um, mm -hmm. but the fact that we would create this huge amount of hype, which would take a huge amount of sales and marketing efforts and um, a hell of a lot of resource invested into it for this opportunity where we would allow the vendor community who would be sponsoring what we would do, which would saturate what we, which, what we were part of, unfortunately um and and that opportunity of bringing all these fantastic minds and these fantastic people together um and that opportunity of growing out the network building their relationships with each other and having that ongoing um touch point with each other would be gone because the focus would just purely be on, on that one day or two day or two and a half day summit that we would produce um so regardless of um whether we could generate revenue ourselves um which is a hard part of it you know we are community first and commercials last which does make it very difficult there's been postponement of chapters there's been um issues in sort of generating that revenue side of things which you know we're always open to identifying other ways of doing it outside of the norm of getting people just to sponsor our chapters you know mm -hmm. but um but regardless of that we've managed to in a very simplified form build and grow out networks of the executives that we've worked with, whether we've created moments in time or events or chapters um, or not, you know, and our community have leveraged each other's um, perspectives pretty much before, you know, we existed, but outside of their own individual networks, we've been able to sort of use our own methods of growing out the community through just simply finding people relevant to the industry on LinkedIn or being recommended to someone who's might have heard someone spoke at another event or whatever the case me and uh, whatever the case be and bring those people together um, to leverage each other outside of a day summit or a day conference um, and bringing them into each other's environments 24 um, seven. It's a very simplified format. 
But off the back of that, the themes and topics that we then leverage from within our communities are so justified and are so relevant from a content perspective that we we're able to um, essentially you know, justify any time investment that comes into us because they're building it for themselves. And the best things out there are always built by the people themselves. It's as simple as that. It's whether they're empowered enough to do it themselves is a different matter. There's different forums. There's the Jedi Council in South Africa. There's the Retail Risk Forum in South Africa as well, which, you know, do pull together the key stakeholders and and do a really good job but they've got a job to do outside of pulling those forums together you know so another reason behind this union is you know we can help those types of initiatives as well and and, and be a resource behind that because we're not just about commercials right we're, we're able to put our time into things that will make um make our communities lives a little bit easier right and yeah. we all know how tough the industry is right so um absolutely. so yeah absolutely James, have you got anything that you would love to add to that? Yeah, there's a few points that Lee had brought up there. And I think it's it's um, important to, to just um, state as well that, that, yes, we build communities, but they're people. Yeah. And being able to treat them as people, not as a commodity or a number or community member, is something that we hold dear within what we try to do. And and I'll hopefully you can testify for this as well, Marilise, is, you know, we've known each other, what, two months now, three months. Um, and I think we've had more conversations about how each other's families are doing than we have about work. And that's what it's about. You know, we build those relationships with our communities where I always say to, to any new community member that comes on board, I want you to feel comfortable and have that relationship with me where if things aren't going great in work, then you've got someone here within me that is there to listen. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be about work, but also if something is not working within our chapters that we run and, and it's, you know, it's maybe we need to be looking at doing things differently is it's being able and being comfortable to reach out and say, and look, that wasn't that great. Maybe we need to change how we're doing stuff. Um, but then also the other point I think that is, is key within the, the alliances is everything Lee touched on it a little bit. There is everything is built around what they want. Yes. and what they tell us so we can only do as much as the information we're getting from them and that's that starts with who else should be involved in the community you know what voices are out there or who do you listen to the most or who is more influential or whatever it may be um or is there new starters within the industry is there new new up-and-coming CISOs that that would benefit from talking to their peers um and also the the content Lee touched on that again as, as I said of that is given to us by the community members we ask we ask our community what do you want to be talking about what's relevant to you instead of global trends or what other events companies are doing not interested it's our community that that drives that conversation um and also the the commercial side of things is and and this makes it a little bit different a little bit more difficult on top of the points that lee um pointed out there is we only work with vendors or, or sponsors that have been nominated by our community ideally in a um, customer perspective sort of sort of way where we can have a community member that brings a vendor that they're working with along to actually give that customer perspective so it is it is purely and, and it's it might sound really simple um, but unfortunately it's not it, it's quite rare to be able to have something that what we've got is the community come on board knowing full well that they build everything right down to how we run our days, how many sessions we have, what's involved, who's involved. Um, and, and I think that's one of the unique things that we, that maybe we don't get across to people as, as much as we should. Um, but it is something that I think we should be really proud of, of, of this. You know, we've like Lee said, we've been six years as a group. I've been here, um four or five years and the uk has been running for um since just after lockdown and it's you know all all set all of our regions that we run are flourishing because of what we do but i think most importantly of who we are and i, I don't yeah. really want to blow our own trumpet with that but it is you know it's because of us you know they're not just a number to us they're not just a a, a CISO or got a c-level executive title doesn't doesn't bother me you're still a person and i'm going to treat you as a person 
and have a conversation with you as I would a family member, a friend, or someone I've just you know met on a night out. It, it's having a conversation, having a bit of a fun with it as well, because it can be a lonely job that these CISOs have got, as yeah. as they all can attest to, and we've all cured numerous times and and just been able to. It, it's quite sad that they haven't been treated as just humans at the end of the day they are treated and, and whenever they get messages on linkedin or they get random emails or their phone is is wrong is because and, and i'm not afraid to say this the other person at the other end of the line sees a pound sign or a dollar sign that's purely it and that needs to change yeah absolutely and i think there's there's also for me since since i've um, joined your community i i've been very much um you know, feeling that sort of sense of um, closeness, sense of collaboration, sense yeah. of unity. Um, I haven't necessarily felt the same in many other communities um, because there is sometimes um, quite a um, a toxic environment yeah. um, that comes yeah. with working working in these environments. And um, again, I'm not slating, I'm, a, I'm just the, the energy that I felt in, in this community for me has felt very welcoming, it's felt very sincere. Um, and it's, it's actually really refreshing because I don't think our industry is very used to that sort of vibe for want of a better word. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, don't, don't get me wrong. We're, you know, we're, we're a family at the end of the day. And you're going to have your disagreements. You're going to have your, yeah. your um, everyone's going to have their toxic traits and, and going to, yeah. you know, do things differently to each other. But it's finding that balance that works for the whole group. Um, yeah. And I think that that starts right from us is setting the tone of, of making sure that they're aware of what expectations are expected of them, um, but yeah. also what we're expecting of ourselves. Um, yeah. And I think that's that's important as well, that we get that across to any anyone that we work with whether it's a, a sponsor or a community member that, that's coming into our family, because that's what it is. It, it's yeah. a family, family vibe. Yeah. You know, there's no, yeah. there's no pressure or, or anything like that, but it's, it's expectations yeah. are laid out right from the beginning of, of how we run things and what we expect. Um, and yes, it's not going to be for everyone. We're not, we're not naive enough to think that. Um, but, you know, we're, we're there to, to try and make a difference and, and yeah. touch wood and, and, listening to what you've experienced with the group so far as well. I think we're on our way to achieving that. Let's, let's put it that way. No, it's fantastic. I, um, I'm really, um, very, uh, pleasantly, pleasantly surprised. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I, I mean, I, I, I have to pick up on some of the biggest challenges, obstacles, opportunities, whichever way you want to look at it. But let's just say for the moment, they are big challenges because we know CISOs have a, a difficult day job. You know, this is when, when, when nothing goes wrong, you know, the CISO is kind of in, in a good place, but you know, we know that things happen and with with everything happening in the world right now you know c cyber attacks and you know cyber security incidents are just the order of the day um it just happens and it just it's not a case of if it's a case of when um and sort of without sort of compromising confidentiality i was just really curious to know what are some of the sort of biggest things biggest challenges that thesis are actually grappling with um so james let's start with you I, I would say one of the, the, the major things is um, it's it probably probably been like this for, for years as well and, and maybe um, ups and downs when it comes to to finding the right people when it comes to to your teams and and so forth is making sure that everyone is um, on board with what you're trying to achieve as an organization but also then the the other side of it is again this is probably something that has been talked about numerous times and, and probably still will be going into the future is talking to boards and having boards input onto you know what an organization needs and, and getting them to understand cyber security because we can all understand it in our own personal life i had it this morning with my paypal account had been hacked and i had to change i had to call them and change my password and everything everyone understands and realizes that's a threat when it comes to personal life and all your your emails and, and bank account details and whatever. But I think once we go into work, there's that divide that somehow, uh, you know, appears and, and even for board members, 
not really fully understanding what a CISO does, I think is is still a an issue that needs to over that we need to overcome. And whether that's you know we've talked about it in our chapters, whether that's you need to have someone on the board with CISO experience um, to be able to to sort of relay what the organization and what the CISO is actually telling the board that they need. I think that's that's another um, another issue that is probably still still quite big within the industry um, and what we're seeing within our community of, of um, CISOs and what we discuss. Um, and another thing is every now and again, or not every now and again, you'll, you'll probably get it two or three, four or five times a year where all these different acronyms come out of you should be doing this, you should be doing that, you should be dealing with this, you should be dealing with that. And no one really understands what it is. Hmm. Um, I think it's very overcomplicated cybersecurity. I'm not a CISO. I'm nowhere near it. I'm not even going to profess to it. I was lucky to be able to jump onto this call today without my laptop crashing. So that's my <laughs> level of, of, of IT, IT uh, skills or, you, you know, cyber. But from what we've discussed within our groups is a lot of people are, are getting very frustrated with having to do things or, or talk about things over and over again. And I think that's where the CISO alliances come in, in, in running in you know, we run it under Chatham House rules where we want to be able to make sure that you are comfortable to be able to have those conversations where you can share your experience. And I don't think there's enough um, within the industry as a whole of, of people sharing what's gone wrong. Mm -hmm. When you have been attacked, when you have been hacked or the issues that you faced, you know, we, we've had numerous people that have had to work over Christmas last year or, the you know, the year before or have had to, you know, work over weekends and work for four or five days, you know, straight with very little sleep. Um, being able to to share that experience and and give their knowledge, what they've learned from it is is invaluable. And I don't think that's done enough within the community. You know, there was one, we ran a, a community session for the, the South Africa community as well as the UK lot. And it was actually, I can't remember their name, I'm not gonna name names, but it was someone from the, the SA community turned around and said, this is the only way we're going to learn is is by listening to other people's mistakes, unfortunately. Um, and that's what we're here for, giving these guys and girls that platform to be able to to talk through their their issues and, and what they, if you like, it's like counselling, you know, being able to 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 actually be in a safe space and go, look, this is what we, this is how it went wrong. This is how we overcame it. Um, and I think that's probably number one is is communication within cybersecurity not just within your teams, but I think between peers, um, there's still that element of, oh, I can't talk to them because they're within my industry and they might, you, you know, there's that sort of industry espionage sort of worry about what's going to go on. But I think we we need to be having these conversations and, and that's number one in, in my eyes of, of what's what's wrong is is mm. the communication side of things. So you picked up on um, communication and I fully, fully agree with that. You've also mentioned the working for five days straight. Um, we know that stress and burnout is a huge, huge, huge problem for this community. Um, Lee, I want you to sort of also just pick up on on your perspectives in this space. Um, and, I, and I also just whilst James were chatting there, I was thinking, how much is this also perhaps sometimes a self-confidence issue? You know, I, th I think, you know, so we talk about communication and we talk about not necessarily landing our messages. Um, uh, can you say a little bit more? Um, just your your yeah no there. for sure I think <clears throat> you got to look at the causality behind it all right and you you sometimes you got to take a step back as we get lost quite quickly in our own industries um, mm -hmm. being a CISO or being labelled as one um, the route to get in there has has never been clear even up until now really I think there's institutes academia now supporting this um, this industry. A lot better than where it was, you know, I don't know, 15, 16, 17 years ago where the role didn't really exist. You know, I think um, you have to look at the causality behind it. And unfortunately, you've got a lot of different expertise being thrown into this siloed department. Um, and I go back in terms of the root of the CIO, because I do see comparisons there of, you know, the, the IT manager. <laughs> and now, as we know, as the CIO, right? 
um, that that route to impact in business and business transformation, not even digital transformation, right? But business transformation, um, transforming every element of the business to be led mm-hmm. by IT um, is, is is something that has happened now over the last couple of decades. And and you see that industry flourish and even where you see in CIOs becoming CEOs, et cetera, where you wouldn't mm-hmm. traditionally see that previously. Um, for me, the CISO, because of the background of the CISO and the route that they've had to become the CISO isn't clear. Um, I think it's often um, quite a singular perspective that they have without clearly understanding what the expectations of the board may be in terms of the communication. So this translation of the value of the CISO is what's missing um, in my eyes. Um, I think I think there's um, a lot to spend going on the industry. There's a lot of costs going on in the industry, and that's typically how business will look at things rather than the total cost and the total spend if that industry, if this industry or this arm of the business didn't exist, right? And translating that. And I think the the community are always too quick to sort of leverage what's happening outside of their organization without promoting what's happening within their organization. And that alignment to business is something that the CIO did really well over the last couple of years, over the last 10 years or so, um, where they drove the business's direction with IT. Um, and the CISO is still implementing what they think is right into a business that may not want to go in that direction, right? And I think you've got to have a strong character. You touched on the confidence side of things, right? You've got to have that resilience, personal resilience in this industry is beyond the burnout side of it is completely real. Corporate full stop, right? Any C-level role within corporate, you're, you're up against it. But cyber where, you know, the threat actors and the impact as to your role are not particularly in your control at all in terms of the cyber threat landscape out there. Um, I do I do fear that um, sometimes the the information security or cyber security executive isn't empowered to align themselves with a business or de- de- are reluctant to align themselves with business for the fear of setbacks, for the fear of knockbacks, for the fear of not having the impact they desire. Um, and so on and so forth. So there's a big trust element within this industry um, and a big sort of risk appetite or understanding risk appetite within an organization to understand how much pressure you need to put yourself under within the organization. And I think all those all those areas of aligning, aligning yourself to business, aligning the impact you're going to have within your tenure, within that organization, you know, it all comes back to understanding what the organization is is going to adopt in terms of that risk appetite. Um, and also within that, if it, if things happen outside of your control, that the organization is taking on that risk appetite, don't be afraid to highlight that. You know, it's it's a simple thing of not passing the buck, but going, you know, it's been highlighted to you. You didn't want to take it on. It is what it is. We move on, you know, and not necessarily carrying that burden themselves. I think a lot of executives, because of how passionate they are, um, how much care, how much they care about the industry, and how much they care about the organisations who, who pay, who are paying them essentially. Um, you know, there's there's always that guilt there, and I really think that needs to go. It's so unnecessary. It's just as long as you do your damnness to make sure that the worst case scenario doesn't happen, and you're highlighting where it could. You haven't got to carry that burden yourself. And if you get <laughs> if you get removed from that organization, then value yourself. Look at your self worth, right? You've gone through all that incident. If you can apply those lessons into the next organization, you're so much more valuable, so much more experienced than anyone that they can drag in from another business division, <laughs> which has happened a lot with information yeah. security, um, or, or from outside of the organization, right? So. So yeah, a couple of points there. I think you know to consolidate. I think the self worth is is really important within this industry. I don't think it's there as much as what it should be. Um, and I think the conscientiousness to apply yourself to where the business is going takes away a lot of that pressure. Because if you're trying to stop your company from being breached in a time where you're next, if you haven't been done already, um, you know that just needs to go and just sort of relax and enjoy the insight excitement of the industry. You know, we talk about the skills gap and this industry not being that sexy, right? It's it's amazing. It's fascinating. This industry is, and I think that um, we we can take a lot of the negativity around the industry away by seeing it for what it is, really, um, and and attract the right skills and nurture the right skills in terms of the value of experience within within the industry. But you know, in terms of the technical 
challenges um, that executives have, you know, it varies across the organizations, right, and across industries and within those industries themselves, you know, one FSI is not the same as the next FSI and the same thing throughout all the industries. So, again, cross vertical CISO alliances, as an example, you know, it is a platform that people can benefit from if they are willing to park their egos to a point, willing to park the company that's that's paying their bills, trust the Chatham House rule environment, um, and share what they can to the level they can. Obviously, from a compliance standpoint, we, we don't want to be the fall guy for anything going wrong. It's been shared that it shouldn't have been. But, um, but you know, in terms of the community stuff, then, you know, come and be part of it because you can leverage a lot from each other. And don't just trust what you know and don't trust what, you, what the, your existing network knows. You know, look outside of that. I think what you what you've presents for me, which um, I just want to sort of um, try and try and summarize. This is mm. a, this is a top, this is a big topic, but I'm I'm just reflecting on you know the CISO having a real high value um, cyber resilience strategy and really thinking about you know. Um, the priorities that we have in terms of how we are going to tackle things, you know, from a CISO's perspective, having that clarity around, you know, what are our priorities? What are we doing? But most importantly, what are we not doing? And having mm -hmm. sort of those clear, um, clear delineations. I think, um, you know, CISOs um, and, and, and getting that board engagement and buy in and sign off, you know, I think there's a, there's a big piece there around, um, what is your cyber resilience strategy and how are you demonstrating the value to the business? You know, what, mm -hmm. are the, what, are the, what are the pillars to show that you're actually delivering that value to the business? And um, I think more and more CISOs are actually um, challenged to, to bring that business acumen, that commercial acumen to the table. Um, but I think it is, it, is, it is a team sport, you know, and this is the key, key message that I want to sort of uh, share is that it isn't just the CISO's job. This is a business, business risk. Um, and it's, it's so much about educate, educating the business around this as well. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Definitely. Nice, nicely summarized. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, um, what what does the future hold for uh, CISO alliances? What is your sort of vision three to five years from now? Um, can I go first? <laughs> well, you, well, you're you're the founder, so I think you should <laughs> definitely. <laughs> no, I think um, th there's we, we've spoken about the industry, the community, you know, that we've we've built and internally that's exactly how i've set this up right we we have essentially a franchise model um within the CISO alliances isn't that and that's not because i'm afraid to pay wages right that's not the reason behind it um the the, the CISO alliances was or well, the alliance media group was born to allow people that i saw go through so much hardship within the events industry that came from other events companies and had gone through so much character distraught and character destroying behavior within this industry you know I, I can only describe i know you compare it to those people that are familiar with the wolf of wall street film right it's it's this high intense hammer the phone sales environment um where you're dealing with people which we've touched on already right i'm not going to go back into that but um within within the alliances as as a whole right and um i, I just want people to be aware that if if you care about bringing people together and them leveraging each other, information security or not, you can be part of Alliance Media Group. You can grow out your own territory, your own industry, um, in in whatever part of the world that you you want to, right? And you'll get so much more fulfillment. You'll achieve so much more commercials that you will that you get <laughs> where you're getting your three to five percent which you're currently getting and your thirty thousand pound a year which you're currently getting in your events company um as an example um and um and yeah you know you're part of a family internally here you know there's there's currently four executives um me included in that that are growing out um essentially the CISO alliances as the core of the business um, it, it is alliances.global because it's not limited to information security and cyber security. It's just that's the industry that we've leveraged and, and, and grown and made the most impact in as such. But, um, but yeah, you know, for, for me, the, the, the future, 
um, looks like us continuing to nurture and grow this community, develop the industry. I think we forget sometimes of the role that we've got to play in, in terms of developing the industry, looking outside of the top level executive um, and looking within these teams and developing those teams and giving those teams insight in terms of how CISOs are looking at business and at their role at the moment because their teams are the next ones in, right? They are the next layer. Um, naturally, I work in South Africa. The skills gap in South Africa is even greater than what it is in um, in the rest of the world, as such. Um, or the comparisons that I've got, and um, you know, there's 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 a lot of work that needs to be done locally there. So, so yeah, if I could put a if I could put a thing on it, you know, in terms of internally, I want us to have presence in other territories that we're not at the moment. We've grown throughout the subcontinent within Africa quite quickly. Um, we've, we've now impacted North Africa with an Egypt community build, which has been going on for about 13 months now. Um, James has done a fantastic job in the UK and Ireland, but you know, there's, there's perspectives and opinions outside of those territories that need to be leveraged within to the exist, within to the existing, um, territories that we, we have the alliances, you know, so, um, I want us to have that presence. Um, and we are looking at cross pollination, right? Across those, not looking to grow out like a Jitex or an Infosec Europe where everyone and anyone is invited, but, you know, nurture the relationships and then allow the relationships to grow across some of these territories with like foreign exchange programs and things like that. We'd love to start rolling out. Um, I think myself and James particularly have common interest in terms of the territories that we're present in. Um, so I think we're going to, we're going to trial that for H1 next year as an immediate thing. And, and we hope that will grow grow from from there you know but um in terms of the immediate future it's, it's just six years in we survived a pandemic let's go to second gear now and uh and hit the ground running as such and um like i said anyone who's who's kind of sees the industry a little bit like us and kind of feel a little bit like a contact contact center executive rather than a relationship manager or a delegate manager or a sponsorship sales manager or a vp if uh the company's bold enough to have that structure, then come and have a chat with us, right? And and help us grow this out because there's a lot of fulfillment. There's a lot of work to do. Um, but um but yeah, we we, we will get there. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. It's um I think with the especially with the UK side of things, um, Marilise, my my goal and this is how I set set out to to sort of achieve when I started started the UK is we want to be the the one stop shop if you like, for CISOs and C-level executives, IT decision makers, in the sense of we've got our, our core chapters that we run, whether, whether it's digital or physical chapters that we run, and, and we have our, our touch points where we have our WhatsApp and our um, different chat groups that we use, um, but also listening to, to what the community have told us. You know, this year we've put, into, we put in place partnerships with a recruitment agent that has been nominated by the community. Uh, it's not just someone out there. It's been nominated by a, by a community members that have worked with that with a specific recruitment agent. Um, we've we're about to announce a, a partnership with a, a mental health and well being organisation for for our members to go through. I want to be able to have partnerships with skills companies where they can learn extra skills. You know of mm -hmm. whether it's as simple as you know what what how do i need to be talking to a board you know and, and being able to to learn those those sort of skills through through us as the CISO alliances um we're here and what we want to be especially in the uk and i i, I think lee has this this sort of understanding as well and, and feeling with the the sa group is we want to be able to offer everything that you need you know whether that is becoming a publicist and publishing a book every single year of, of what we've what we've discussed and there's frameworks in there for for you guys to to sort of bounce off when when you come across issues um whether it's you know having like like we, we touched on earlier working five six days straight and and having to deal with the stress and the loneliness of a job and and not you know some people still don't want to go through what their organization is offering mental health wise or well-being is, is we've got that here. I don't need to know about it. It's there for you to use. Um, please do. Or if you're, you know, looking to change jobs or you're looking to employ new, new team members, then we've got the recruitment agent that can help you with that, whether it's just helping you with your CV or negotiating a new package for you. 
doesn't have to be look at you know they don't have to find you the actual job that's that's the unique setup that we've got there um so that's that's what we want to be with the uk is is somewhere so everyone can come to and and spill their beans and and everything of what's been going on and and just feeling like i said feeling comfortable that they know with with the group that we've got they can get everything that they need through you know there's so many so many events companies out there or media companies out there that do a great job but might only do one thing you know we want to be that one place where everyone comes to that that um you know they do it now but there are other events or they're at other social events and talking about the CISO alliances to their peers and getting them involved. You know, that's what we want, you know, and that's the, that's the greatest feedback that we can get is our, our community members are introducing us to new community members because of what they're experiencing with us. And that's, you can't ask for any more than that, really. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you guys. So Lee, when you were chatting about South Africa, I sort of, felt really happy and uh, I mean you guys both know um, I don't think it's it's widely known yet um, by but I'm going to say it you know and I'm going to share that you know um, my family uh, my, my husband and I with our two boys have decided to return to South Africa next year so that's after 18 years in the UK and when you mention things like the skills gap and the difference that you know we can make um, it really just warms my heart and it's just really made me very, very excited. So I just wanted to throw it out there and to share with everybody, um, our exciting news as well. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. I, I think, um, there's, there's loads of, um, reintroductions I can help you with in, uh, in SA and they're going to welcome you back with open arms. I know they will, but, um, you know, I think, you know, what we spoke about and for those who are not, not familiar, you know, I, I had experience of covering Europe and Africa predominantly for the for the previous company and um, got to travel loads of different places. And for me, South Africa was just this place that I fell in love with. The people welcomed me. And um, and yeah, I'm, I'm ever so grateful to help or feel like I'm helping this industry if I, even if I'm not helping as much as they expect. But, um, but no, it's, um, it, it's a fantastic place. So if um, anyone's looking to... Uh, Sorry, James, get out of the UK and, and go and see somewhere beautiful and go hey, work in SA. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't blame you guys, honestly. You know, I, you know, you know, Lee, I've got family ties in, in SA. I love the place. I've spent Christmases and summers there. Um, I, I think it's, you know, it's something, it's, it's a place that they don't sell themselves as much as they should because it no. is absolutely beautiful down there. And the people are great and they get a bad rep up here. It's the same as everywhere. You know, there's there's bad places, but for some reason, up here in the, in the UK, we seem to just cling on to that that bad news. And I, you know, touch wood, I can honestly say, when I was down there, you don't feel unsafe, or you it's just beautiful. Absolutely, mm-hmm. everywhere you go, um, and the people are great. So I'm very jealous, Marilise, that you <laughs> that you've gone that you're going back. To be honest with you, I can't believe you moved here in the first place. That, that's, that's coming from that's coming from someone that's sat in, sat in Cardiff and is absolutely chucking it down. So. Well, you you are both very welcome. Um, hopefully, in about a year's time, give or take, um, we'll have our new home in Jamestown, uh, which is the little village just outside Stellenbosch. Um, Great name. So we will be um, s- surrounded by by beautiful mountains and wine farms. So I will happily invite you both for the best wine too. So guys, wine, thank wine you on so the veranda. Much. I'm up for that. <laughs> exactly, guys. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, and for all the amazing work that you do. I think this is so needed and um, so timely. Um, our industry is burning. People need support. People need help. Um, people are lonely. CISOs in particular are lonely. Um, I see that every day. And so the, the work that you guys do is so appreciated and so valued. And please promise me that you will keep going. <laughs> um, yeah. So guys, um, I think people can best best to connect with you on LinkedIn, um, Lee Thomas and James Smith on LinkedIn. Um, and your website is um, www.alliances.global. Correct. So Correct. Um, is there any, any other ways people can get in touch with you? 
I won't put my mobile number on this, my release, but um, but no, LinkedIn, <laughs> LinkedIn's probably the best bet. Um, we, um, you know, if you feel like you just want to hear us out or just have a taste of, of what we're doing, then then just reach out. You know, we, nobody judges anyone within our environment. We won't allow it. Um, we we just want this unity and progression within the industry, and we want to play a role in that. We're not going to be the only ones doing it, um, but you know, we can definitely help and introduce you to the people that will be like-minded at least so you can get an opinion yeah. it may help you along the way but yeah linkedin or, or our website you can you can find us for CISO alliances and we should pop up somewhere on one of the first 10 pages on google <laughs> yeah just I, I would just say register on the on the website or linkedin um and lee won't give his mobile out but if you contact me i'm happy to give it to you um <laughs> <laughs> just just so you can call him and annoy him but yeah that's probably the best way my release that you know we're, we're quite prevalent on linkedin anyway with our personal pages and our our business pages so hopefully um yeah people will will get in touch and if they want that safe space to to be able to discuss with peers and even just after a hard day you know we've got we've got groups we got people in my group that i think the other other week they had a gin evening all together you know, just Amazing. three or four of them had had a tough week and, and there was messages in the group and one of them said, oh, give me a call. And they ended up drinking and putting the world to right. So <laughs> that's what it's about is is just building those relationships. So, yeah, anyone that, that feels that they need to get involved then or want to get involved, then reach out and we can have that conversation because I, I think that's another thing that we just want to, I just want to quickly touch on is if you register, you're not just put into a system. We want to be able to have a phone call with you, uh, you know, over over Teams or or Skype to be able to have a face to face and actually get to know each other a little bit, and and, and I think that's the best way to do it. Fantastic, thank you both. Um, well done, also for making your podcast debut today, both of you. <laughs> Naturals, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, super, we should do it again super. sometime. <laughs> <laughs> we will we will um we will definitely do that so thank you so much guys and thank you everybody for tuning in today um we hope you found the episode valuable and took away some key points don't forget to subscribe um, um to get your latest episodes and to find out more about how we can help you and your team strengthen your resilience muscle and find your roar <laughs> head over to marilies dash de dash villiers Thank you very much.